Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our Accentuating the Negative math video. Let's get you ready for that test that's coming up. Mm-hmm. We got positive numbers, negative numbers. We're just, we got, when we're multiplying, we're dividing, we're adding, we're subtracting. There's so many things going on, but you got this. All right, so throughout the video here, why don't you go ahead and pause and work these problems out as we go. Um, that'll probably be the best way to do this because you don't want to just watch me do the math because I'm not the one taking the test. You are, you silly goose. So why don't you, um, like, pause, I'll, like, I'll start the problem. I'll say pause, you pause, work it out, press play, and then let's kind of see what happens. And then if you get really bored, you just speed me up, and then I can sound like this if you really do it really fast. And then I, like, speed up a little bit. But here we go. Enough of that. Let's go to work. All right, rewrite these numbers in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to pay attention. It's least to greatest because some people who don't really um, pay attention to details, they do it from greatest to least. They do, they have it in the right order, which is really great, but they're not answering the question I'm asking. So let's go ahead, least to greatest. So from least to greatest, I'm going to first look, go ahead and take a look and pay attention to my um, negative numbers. So negative four-thirds is actually negative one and one-third. And negative 5 fourths is negative 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, so the further you get away from 0 on the number line, the greater, let's see, the further you get away from 0, the smaller the number is. So that puts um, 1 and 1 third as kind of like my least number, right? So that's 4 and 4 thirds. So I'm going to do negative 4 thirds. And then I'm going to do negative 5 fourths. Okay, there we go. Because this one is smaller. There we go. And then I've got my, my 0, so that's already set. So let's look at these other ones. 2 thirds and 4 fifths. Well, obviously 4 fifths is almost 5. So it's practically a whole one right here. So that's going to be my biggest number. So 4 fifths. And then my 2 thirds is going to be tucked in right here. So there's my list. Negative 4 thirds. Negative 5 fourths, 0, 2 thirds, and 4 fifths. Yeah. Find each sum or a difference. All right, sum is the answer to an addition problem, and difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So why don't you press pause, work these out, and let's talk about them for a moment. Thank you for pressing pause. So when I look at these numbers right here, I see when you're subtracting a negative. When you're subtracting a negative, it's like taking away debt. And the only way you can take away debt is to add. Like if you owe your little brother money, the only way to take away that debt is to give them money. If you're, yeah, like that's the only way to do it. So the best way to kind of look at this situation is don't look at it as subtracting a negative, look at it as an addition problem. So that's really what's happening here is you have 15 and you're taking away negative 12. So if I, if I even think of this as the number line here, if I'm at 15, to take away negative 12, to take away negatives, is actually moving me toward the positives. So I see 15 minus negative 12, but I'm really going to look at it as 15 plus 12, which equals 27. All right, right, let's talk about this next one here. All right, so, you know, we have another situation where we're subtracting a negative. So when you see the subtracting a negative, taking away debt, the only way to take away debt is to add. So this really is in disguise an addition problem. So the way to think about it, again, if you want, I'm going to mill that over. It's negative 13, and I'm taking away debt, so I'm moving toward the positives. So my problem is negative 13 minus negative 20, but it really is negative 13 plus 20. So that's how I see the problem, but honestly, that's really not how I'm going to solve it. Okay, I'm actually going to solve it this way because negative 13 grows until we get to zero, and then we got to figure out what's the rest of the way to get to my final parking spot. So how I do that is I am going to say take the full 20 that I'm moving, I'm going to subtract the 13 in this area to find out what's left that I need to move. So 20 minus 13 is 7. So before I just put down, I'm going to put down a 7, but I have to pay attention and go, okay, is this going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive. So that's all set. You know, let me come back and look at this guy. Let's make sure that I know it's going to be positive. So if I'm at 15 and I'm growing 12, yep, this will be positive 7. Cool beans, cool beans. Let's go to this one. Find some are different. So why don't you press pause, give it a try, and let's go to work. So if I'm at negative 50 on the number line, 
okay? A negative 50. And then I'm adding positives to it, okay? So that's actually going, so that's going up towards zero. Now, 25 is not enough, so I still know that I'm going to be in the negatives, all right? And um, um, I do see negative 50 plus 25, but how I'm going to solve it is really 50 minus 25 because I'm subtracting out the, the 25 steps to try to figure out where I'm landing. So 50 minus 25 is 25. And I just got to remember, okay, well, it's a negative. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this guy. So I'm at negative 23. So if I think number line stuff, I'm at negative 23. And I'm adding more negatives. So when I'm adding more negatives, I'm actually dropping. I'm getting deeper down into debt, or the temperature is dropping. So I do see that if I'm at the negatives and I'm adding more negatives, then that actually is going to keep me negative. So I'm just going to take care of that. And then I'm going to do 23 plus the 24 it's dropping, and that's going to be at 47. All right, but it's, it's got to be negative. Oh, decimals. Oh, yeah, we can do this. Go ahead, press pause. Give it a try. Let's come back. Don't be afraid of those decimals. You got this. All right, welcome back. So 3.5 minus 1.7. Okay, so I'm at 3.5 on the number line, and I'm dropping. Okay, so I'm dropping 7. All right, 1.7. So this really is literally a subtraction problem. I'm not going to change anything about it besides line up the decimals, do a little bit of borrowing, so 15 minus 7, do the 1, it ends up being 1.8. And it is in the positives. So that's all good, okay? Keep track of the negatives on this one, okay? If you might run into those situations. Whoa, fractions. No, 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 we can do fractions. They're no big deal. Let's just get them common denominators. So I got 5 fourths minus, let's get these common denominators. So 6 fourths. Okay, 5 fourths, if I'm at 5 fourths on the number line and I'm dropping 6 fourths, this actually is going to bring me into the negative. So if I have 5 fourths and I'm taking away 6 fourths, I'm pretty much taking away all 5 and then 1 left over. So I'm left with negative 1 fourth. Another way a person could look at this is taking 6 fourths minus 5 fourths and you're left with 1 fourth. And just keeping an eye on that actually is my answer will be negative, all right? So the big thing here that we keep doing this whole time is I see the problem that I have to solve, but then there's the problem I'm gonna do to actually get to my answer. And I'm gonna pay attention to see if it's positive or negative. Whoa, hello, order of operations. Yeah, press pause and work this puppy out. You got this, just chip away at it. Okay, welcome back. So order of operations is PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And I group these ones because multiplying and dividing are siblings. You deal with whoever shows up first. Okay, adding and subtracting are also siblings. Deal with whoever shows up first. Okay, so let's go to work on this one. So I have adding, I've got a multiplication problem right here. So I'm gonna highlight that one. I got subtraction and I've got addition. So I have to do my multiplying first here. So I've got 12 plus, all right. Um, seven times negative four. Now, some people might look at this parenthesis and say, Mr. Weber, you're supposed to do these parentheses first. But hey, that's okay. These parentheses around this negative four is just for organizing the negative. So no big deal there. Okay, so where am I at? Okay, seven times negative four. Seven times negative four is negative 28. Okay, I'm gonna put parentheses around that. Minus, now I gotta deal inside these parentheses here. Okay. Negative 2 plus 5. So I'm at negative 2 and I'm growing 5. Um, I will be at positive 3. Okay. So now my, here's my new problem. Okay, so I have 12 plus negative 28 minus 3. That's all adding and subtracting. So I need to look over here. And adding and subtracting, I deal with whoever shows up first. If subtraction shows up first, deal with it. So let's deal with this. 12 plus negative 28. So if I'm at 12 on the number line and I'm adding negative 28, that means it's dropping down the number line. So I'm going to actually take 28 minus 12 is what I'm going to do. And it puts me at 16. Um, and that's going to be negative 16. So negative 16 and minus 3 is what's left. So if I'm at negative 16 on the number line, okay, and I'm subtracting 3, it's actually getting more negative. 
So I'm going to actually do 16 plus 3, and I'm going to get 19. And because I started in the negatives and I dropped more and stayed in the negatives, I will be at negative 19 is my answer. So order of operations, this is one of those that just you got to chip away. Take your time, chip away at it. Um, yeah, that's that's my advice. Just chip away slowly at it. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, ooh look at that. Tell me how to solve this guy. You press pause. You solve it first. Come on. Go ahead. Just solve it first. All right, let's see where we are. I like to do number line stuff with this one, so I'm at negative 4, and I'm landing at 28. So I'm landing all the way up here at 28. Somewhere i got to pass 0. All right, so my question is, is 4 plus all of this is going to get me to 28? So the question is, is, there's the math I see that I need, but what math am I going to do to solve this? Well, I have to climb this 4, and I have to climb the whole 28, so really it's 28 plus 4. Mm-hmm. Good. That's really all it is. So what's that? 32? So it, it climbs 32. This whole amount climbs 32 steps to get to that 28. So continue to think about it. There's, there's the problem I see, but there's the problem I need to do to solve my answer. So n equals 32. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, multiplying and dividing. You got this. You got this. Why don't you press pause and, and give it a rip? All right, welcome back. I know it was quick. So multiplying and dividing, uh, adding and subtracting, you just have to pay attention on the number line. Where are you at and where are you going? And then when you're going there, are you on the positive side or negative side? For multiplying and dividing, if they're both positive, a positive times a positive will be positive. A negative times a negative will be negative. No, 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 no. Burp. Hold the phone on that one. Mr. Weber, what are you doing? Okay. A positive times a positive will be positive. A negative times a negative will also be positive. It is when they're different. That's when you're negative. Okay. A negative times a positive will be negative. A positive times a negative will be negative. All right. So if they're the same, it'll be positive. If they're different, they'll be negative. All right. Some people say it's kind of like a little bit, a little bit like relationships. If you're both positive, you can sit around and talk about positive things. If you're both negative, you can kind of moan about things together. So like that relationship works. This kind of stuff is a little bit trickier. Like if you got somebody that just moans about the day and Mr. Miss Positive comes by and says, oh, but isn't the sun shining? Yeah, they're both like mad at each other. And then you got a positive person saying, oh, look at my pencil sharpened. And the negative person's like, yeah, but your pencil smells bad. You know, it doesn't, doesn't work so well. So, a little something to keep an eye on. Let's talk about this one. Here we go. 15 times negative 3. We already know that a positive times a negative will be negative. We already done with that one. Check, check. 15 times 3 is 45. Done. Boom. Move along. Okay, 9 times 30. My answer is either going to be 270 or negative 270. Those are the only two things it could possibly be. Because 9 times 30 is 270. But a negative times a negative will be positive. Yeah, it will. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Why don't you press pause and try these ones out? Oh, wow. You came back fast. That's fantastic. So 66 times 2, it's either going to be negative 33 or it's going to be positive 33. Right? So a positive times a negative will be negative. Boom, shakalaka. Fractions. Mr. Weber, I don't do fractions. Oh, come on. This isn't so bad. Look at this. Look at it. It isn't so bad. I got to try to see how many times is 16 going to 48. It goes in there three times. So then I got to pay attention. Is my answer positive 3 or negative 3? And then you notice, Mr. Weber, they're both subtraction. And I'm like, yeah, they are. So a negative divided by a negative will be positive. Chicka, zoom, zoom, la, la, la. Whoa, decimals. And dividing. Can we possibly do this? Yeah. Press pause. Give it a rip. See what happens. All right. That wasn't so bad. So sometimes for these things, kind of ignore the decimal a little bit first. See if that helps. Kind of because we do see a 24 and a 12, and we do kind of know like 12 goes into 24 twice. So really don't overthink these things because really it's either positive 2 or it's a negative 2. That's really what's happening here. There's one negative. Negative divided by positive will be negative. 
Oh, fractions. Hey, but you know what? We don't need common denominators. When we are multiplying fractions, we do not need common denominators. So we just let it rip. So a positive times a negative will be negative. All right, so I already know my answer is negative. All right, so let's do this. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 6 is 24. And then these can be reduced down to negative. Let's see, they both, oh, they both divide by 3. So it's negative 5 eighths. Negative 5 eighths. Yeah, boom. You got this. You got this. Is there more? Oh, there's more. There's Tony. All right, why don't you press pause, read this story, and give it a give it a solve. Okay, Tony wants to take two of his friends to the carnival. He knows it costs ten fifty for an all day pass and two twenty five for a count. Okay. How much will it cost if he pays for carnival tickets and kind of Okay, he's got three people going on this thing. Okay, so that is gonna be three okay, what are they getting? They're getting an all day pass. So we got I'm gonna go ahead and how much I got here? I'm going to start with a number sentence. I don't know why we didn't have this problem first. So let's do a number sentence. So we've got 3 times 1050 and 3 times 225. And that should get it. 3 times 1050 and 3 times 225. Totally. Yeah. And 3 times 1050 is like 3150 plus 3 times 225 is 6 75 and when you add those together you get your first answer which is 3725 it says write a new sentence that shows a different way to find the total cost so one way you could have done this whole thing is you could have said because um i'm adding you know i'm getting three of both of them i could say well couldn't you take the 1050 and the 225 and couldn't you add those together first and then triple it and the answer is yes you would get the same answer so this is like um, a concept of called distributive property. So either you triple it at each for each piece, or you triple it um, at the very, you know, bundle everything first and then triple it. Both are good options, good choices. Yay! Ooh, what to do to make both statements true? Press pause. Give it a try. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Okay, this is kind of checking to see if if um about commutative property. So like not if I'm at nine on the number line and I'm sub and I'm adding negative eleven, so this is gonna bring it down the number line. Okay, when I'm adding negatives, that that brings it down. You can also look at it as nine minus eleven. That's really what it looks like. And we end up at what nine? Like we end up at negative two, and then negative eleven plus nine is also negative two. So that's equal. And it's because it's the commutative property. They're really commutative. That means in addition you can mix them up a little bit. Now this one, this is a subtraction problem. So this is saying eight minus negative six. And we talk about the only way to the only way to take away debt is to add. So this is really saying eight plus six. And over here, this is saying negative six minus eight. So this is saying you're at negative six and you're um you're dropping more negatives. So what's weird is because this one is getting more positive. This one's starting positive and getting more positive. This one is starting negative and getting even more negative. So these puppies, not equal, not at all. A big knee. All right, let's see what else we got. We got, oh yeah, let's try it again. We're just checking um, commutative property. Can you flip the order around and get the same answer? So addition is commutative property. You can flip the order and get the same answer. Subtraction is not commutative. Multiplication, totally commutative. Negative three times two, yeah, it's negative six. Two times negative three, yeah, it's negative six. Totally commutative. How about these guys? Division? Yeah, division's not commutative. It's a big new. Look at this. Um, negative eight divided by negative four. That's like saying eight divided by four, which is positive two. This is saying four divided by eight. That's like four eighths. This is like half. And two does not equal half. It's a big no. So multiplying is commutative. Additing is commutative. Subtraction and division, not so much. Okay, we got a bit of an inequality problem. And you can always tell when I have good ideas because you can hear like a, maybe a little ding noise going on. So this is exciting. So this is saying um, what number plus 7 is going to be less than 12. So there's lots of different numbers that work. Lots of different things that are um, fits in here. So that's why we have like an inequality that work in this situation. All these things up here equal one answer. 
So those are called the equations. This guy need equality? Let's figure it out. So what's going to solve this one? Something plus 7 is less than 12. Okay, to solve this kind of thing, you can treat it like an equation. It kind of helps us solve it a little bit. So we're asking ourselves, um, what plus 7 is going to get us 12? So what plus 7 is going to get us 12? So over here on the side, I'm going to do 12 minus 7 to help us get there. And then that's like 4. So let's check that out. 4 plus 7, does that equal 12? Yeah, it does. So I'm going to put that in here. 4 plus 7, is, uh, to, to, to do the equation, is less than 12. Okay, to make this true, um, we're going to have to go over to 12. No, wait. Oh, what am I saying? We have to go to 4, because that's what we're trying to solve for. So let's find 4. Okay, so here's 4. And it is going to be um, an open dot, because I can't equal it. And it's going to be less than 12. So it's going to be all of these. So all of these answers would make this true, a true statement, right? So if it um, equals the problem, it's going to be a filled in dot. If it's greater than or equal to, it'll be a filled in dot. If it's less than or equal to, it's going to be a filled in dot. If it's greater than, it's open. If it's less than, it's open. It's just how we communicate um, inequalities. Nice. Oh, we got, oh, look at these. Oh, mean. Mean means average. So it's like adding them up a little bit. So why don't you press pause and work through that a little bit. Work through that and get your answer. And we'll kind of go from there. All right, let's see. So to find the average, the mean, we have to add up all the information. So 100 plus negative 250 plus 0 plus 125 plus 350. And we take all that and we divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We divide it by the five pieces of information. And that helps us get our answer. So the top of it is 325 divided by 5. And the answer is 65. So the mean is 60, whoa, 65. So the difference of the highest score and the lowest score. Okay, so the highest score is 350. Difference is subtraction. Wow, let me write that so we can understand it. So 350. And the lowest score is not zero, it's in the negatives. So negative 250, okay? The difference is subtraction. So minus 250. So 350 minus negative 250. Subtracting a negative, it really means adding. So this is really saying 350 plus 250, which equals 550. Oh yeah. Did that work? Did we get them all? We got them all. Yay! Good job. All right, so scan through. Make sure you practice what you need to. Consider Googling different things. Integer practice to get some more practice on these concepts. But you got it. Just pay attention to some of the details of it. Don't go too fast or you're going to make kind of a silly error um, because sometimes these questions look like an answer when they're actually not. Um, so just be careful of that. All right. I am going to go and chase a panda and see if it chases me back.